says this. I'll put the name on here, Mr. Duke. Energy is the ability to do work. That's how it is defined. One mark. What's the minimum amount of work that it would take for a 55 kilogram student to climb a six meter high flight of stairs? And the reason I said minimum is there is friction forces in the direction of the ramp of the stairs. We're going to ignore those. Minimum, you're having to increase your potential energy. Minimum, you're having to resist gravity in that direction. You're gaining potential energy, and that work is coming from your muscles. That energy is coming from your muscles, which is coming from the food that you ate. Minimum, it's going to be 55 times 9.8 times 6. And 55 times 9.8 times 6 is going to be 9.8 times 6. You need 3,230 joules of energy. 3.23 times 10 to the third joules. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Now, was this asking for a change in or anything like that? Nope. And I could use this definition of work. Now, by the way, what I really did, I guess, technically was this. I really said work equals the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. And then I said, Brianne, they're not talking about a final and an initial speed, so I'm going to assume you start at rest and end at rest. So I'm going to assume your change in kinetic is zero. What's change in anything, Brianna? And I'm going to assume initial potential is zero, and that's where the MGH comes from. But you can also derive it from force times distance. Which force? Gravity. Which distance? Vertical distance. Okay. Oh. You're on the ground. Your initial height is zero. I'm talking number two here. I'm still talking question two. Okay. Okay, we're, we're question two. We're good? Now, question three is different. Question three says total energy. When I say total, I think that means find everything and add it up. That's usually what it's meant, to total something up. So for question three, I think total energy is going to be, I'll call it energy T for energy total. It's going to be all of the potential plus all of the kinetic. How much potential? Well, that's MGH. How much kinetic? That's a half mv squared. And now it's plug and chug. It has this much energy at that particular time. It has uh, mass 2, g, 9.8. Brett, what's the height? 5. Plus m, a half m2, v squared, also 5 meters per second squared. The total energy is 2 times 9.8 times 5 plus 0.5 times 2 times 5 squared. Well, I can do this in my head. This is going to be 25 and 98. Uh, 25 and 98 is going to be 124, I bet you. Wow, what? what? No, I'm way... Oh, I did 25 squared, Mr. Do it. Come on, don't tell me my math was that off. 123. Oh, I was off by one. And Kara, the law of conservation of energy says the ball has that much any energy anywhere in its flight. At the top, it has 123 joules of potential, no kinetic. At the bottom, it has 123 joules of kinetic, no potential. In the between, it has in between. Using the following graph of force versus position, find the total work done in moving an object from 0 to 5 meters. The total work done, well, work equals force times distance. They haven't really given me a force and a distance. Oh, wait a minute. Here is where I'm going to use, Joel, the area underneath a force versus distance graph. It's going to be that area. Now, that shape is a trapezoid. Who knows the area of a trapezoid equation? 
So the reason you don't know it is, Matt, it's kind of redundant. Really what almost everyone does is they go, oh, okay, I'm going to call the triangle area 1 and the rectangle area 2. The work in area 1 is going to be base times height divided by 2, which is going to be base uh, 3 times height divided by 2, which is going to be 300 joules. The work in area 2 is going to be, oh, that's just going to be length times width because it's a rectangle. Length is uh, 2, the width is 200, 400 joules. Total amount of work? 7. B, 700 joules. Yes? By the way, if you were pushing on an object, if this was saying, oh, and you were pushing on an object, you actually know how much kinetic energy the object gained. You know how much kinetic energy the object gained? 700. And if you knew how much kinetic energy it gained and you knew its mass, you could actually find out how fast it was traveling. V squared. Solve for V. Oh, apparently I thought of that question at number five. That makes sense. I was going, be a great question to ask. If the graph in question four represents the work done on a four kilogram mass, find the speed if it was initially at rest. So work is also change in kinetic plus change in potential. Nicole, does this question mention a change in height at all? What was my initial kinetic? Well, it says initially at rest, so what's my initial kinetic? And what's change in anything? I think you thought it right and said it wrong, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, You know what? The work is actually going to end up being the final kinetic energy. It's going to end up being a half mv final squared, and it was, I believe, 700 joules of work. Oh. I think the final velocity is going to be 2 times 700 divided by the mass square rooted. Yes? Okay. 2 times 700 divided by the mass square rooted. You know what? It's going to be 18.7 meters per second. I like that question, that combination of four and five. Yo. No. You know why? Force times distance only works when your force is never changing. What's happening to the force for this section? It's changing. Ah, you found the average force. You went 200 divided by 5? How did you divide? 700 divided by... Okay. Okay, now, here's what I'll say. You didn't actually go force times distance. You went average force times distance by finding out the total amount of energy and then working backwards. Yes, I think that is a valid approach. I'm going to say mine's way faster. Okay. Um, but the risk is, like a lot of kids will say, oh, the force is 200 times 5. Oh, 1,000. That's how much energy. This. No, that you cannot do. So if you correct it for that, then yes. Good question. All right. Number 6. Huh? Well, they want power, so I wrote down, I know that power is work over time. That must mean that there's a time in this question, and there is. I think the amount of time we're talking about 
is 60 seconds. That must mean there's a work, work is what times what? Well, first thing I'm going to go, I'm going to think uh, work is force times distance. Now, it's an escalator, which means you're doing work against gravity. I think it's going to be mgh. I think work is going to be how much mass? Well, one passenger is 60, but how many passengers are we moving in a minute? I think the total mass is 60 times 20. G, good old 9.8. Why did they give me this particular diagram? To confuse me. They're hoping some kids will use the 10, and I'm willing to bet one of these answers is what you get if you use 10 as your distance. Because, well, it's moving in that direction. Yeah, but the force is not in that direction. It's not the direction that you're moving. It's which direction is the force that you're resisting. Vertical, so you look at your vertical displacement. In fact, I think it's going to be 60 times 20 times 9.8 times 5. Conveniently, I think I can do this Mitchell without a calculator because those 60s will cancel. And I know that 25 times 20 times 5 is 100. This is 100 times 9.8. I'm pretty sure the answer is at 980. What? Ooh, no calculator, Mr. Duick. See. The minimum motor that that escalator can have is a 1,000 watt motor if it's planning on having that kind of an output. If it wants to be able to move 20 passengers a minute, that's one passenger every three seconds. I'm guessing they would actually have a bigger motor than that because escalators, I think, can move more than 20 passengers in a minute. How many of you have ever been on SkyTrain before in Vancouver? Okay, so uh, in the, I think it's the uh, waterfront station, there's one very, very, very long escalator. It's like a two and a half story. So that one there, much bigger height, that's got to have a pretty hefty, because that would give you a bigger number here, a bigger number here. That's got to have a pretty hefty electric motor, because it is one continuous one. They, they don't, usually they'll stop, build a ramp, and then have you walk on to the next one. That's to save money and use a smaller motor, but this one... For some reason, they couldn't or they didn't. And that's also why you rarely see hugely, hugely long escalators. You need a huge motor to run them. Much easier to break it into two or three. Make sense? I would love to find out how many watts, how many elect, uh, watts the electric motors on the roller coasters, the chain motors. I'd love to find out how many watts those are because I'm pretty sure those are electric motors, not gas. They've got to be pretty hefty as well. Number seven, how much work is required to stop a... 1,200 kilogram car moving at 10 kilometers per hour. Well, see here, Jacob, I would think work equals force times distance. And you can probably calculate the acceleration. Go MA and force times distance. I think it's going to be easier to say it's that. Uh, plus the change in potential, but let's assume the car isn't changing height which is going to be KE final minus KE initial. I think the amount of work is going to be 0 minus a half MV final squared. I got a bit of a problem with this 10. V final is actually going to be 10 divided by 3.6. That's going to be meters per second. And I was going to go to my calculator and I said, hey, wait a minute. Why don't I just put that in over here and save myself the typing, Kayla? I think it's going to be 0. 0.5 times the mass, 1,200, times 10 over 3.6 squared. I get 4,629, actually 4,630 joules of work. Is that okay? Which force is doing the work? Which force is doing the work? Matt, friction. Okay. Now, this is where Jake's at question about force times distance is kind of nice. On an icy day, is friction bigger or smaller? 
smaller, so the distance has to get bigger. That's why it takes you longer to stop on an icy day, and you have to give yourself more stopping room. Ah, oh, makes sense, but there's the physics explanation. I kind of figured that out by driving, yeah, but that's why. Okay. Tarzan says, use the following information for 8 and 9. Tarzan swings from his vine. I guess he starts right here from a height of 2.5 meters. At the end of his swing, he is only 2.54 meters above the ground. How much work has been done by friction? Is there a change in height? Yeah. Is there a change in speed? Probably. For the, is it a nice straight path or is it a curvy path? This is where I'm going to use conservation of energy because when they say how much work has been done by friction, what they're really what we call that all the time is heat. And I'm going to go like this: kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final plus heat. Are any of these zero? How fast is he traveling right here? How high is he right here? Zero? No. How fast is he traveling right here? How high is he right here? Zero? Okay. Oh, but it looks like, I think, heat is just going to be your initial potential energy minus your final potential energy. It's going to be MGH initial minus MGH final. Do the M's cancel this time? No, there's no M in heat. This is going to be mass uh, 75 times 9.8 times 2.5 minus 75 times 9.8 times 2.4 you get 73.5 joules heat equals 73.5 joules, which I believe is answer A. Nine. Now, if there was no friction, what would Tarzan's velocity be at the bottom of the swing? Is there a change in height? Yeah, and a change in speed. I'm going to use conservation of energy. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. No heat. And again, I think initial kinetic is zero. And I think at the bottom of the swing, final potential is zero because you're on the ground. I think I can go MGH initial equals a half MV final squared. Now this time, as it turns out, the masses do cancel because we're ignoring friction. Yay! In fact, I think V final is going to be 2 G H initial square rooted. I think it's going to be 2 times 9.8 times 2.5. Oh, square root of 49. Is it exactly 7? 7. A roller coaster car of mass 1,000 kilograms traveling with an initial velocity of 4 meters per second is 18 meters above the ground. It drops to the ground and then climbs a 10 meter high hill. A. How fast is it traveling at the bottom of the hill? Okay. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Thankfully, I'm pretty sure that's zero. I don't think initial kinetic is, though. It's got a velocity here in my diagram. Don't! Needs a bit more work. 
uh, a half m v i squared plus m g h i equals a half m v final squared. Masses cancel, which is nice. And this is also, Connor, where I tended to go times by two, times by two, times by two to get rid of that one half and that one half. It gave me a prettier equation. I get this. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2GH initial. And you may see VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. That's where the equation actually comes from. Uh, Okay. V final is going to be the square root of uh, 4 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 18. 4 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 18 equals square root. You get 19.2. Yeah, keep nodding. In terms of marking, I would probably go something like this. One mark if I saw that, one mark if I saw that, and then one mark for the answer. How fast is it traveling at the top of the second hill? I'm going to start out exactly the same. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. <sighs> Sadly, none of these is zero. Okay, so it's a little bit of plug and chug. A half mv initial squared plus mgh initial equals a half mv final squared plus mgh final. Once again, the mass cancels. Once again, I'm going to times by 2, times by 2, times by 2, times by 2. So that they cancel here and they cancel here. I'm going to get this. V initial squared plus 2GH initial equals V final squared plus 2GH final. Zay, how would I get the VF squared by itself? Subtract this first, yes. That. I canceled out my M's because I could. And I multiplied by 2 to get rid of fraction. You don't have to. I just do because it makes the numbers cleaner. So if I hear you correctly, we're going to get this. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2GHI minus 2GH final. Or, okay, VF is going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 18 minus 2 times 9.8 times, was the second hill 10 high? Is that what I did? Okay. Conveniently, I have half of that already typed on my calculator. See? Mm -hmm. One less mark. Minus 2 times 9.8 times 10. Square root. Do you get 13.1? Because it is. In terms of uh, work, I'd give you one mark if I saw that, give you one mark if I saw that, one mark for that, one mark for the answer. Yo! You canceled potential and initial and you still got that answer? Couldn't have. So what did you cancel? Tell me. That. And. So you canceled that, which would have canceled that, which would mean your equation would have been this. I'm just multiplying it by zero to cancel it. See how clever? There's no way you could have got that. You would have got a calculator error. Okay. Sean. If you use this at the bottom, then you could cancel out. But okay, you need to tell me that because because doing it the other way, no way. Now 
that's a perfectly valid way. The only risk is you're gambling. This better be right. Otherwise, you could be using a wrong answer to find a wrong answer. For me, I almost never do that on a test or a quiz. Even if it's more work, I'll use the information that they gave me almost whenever possible unless I'm absolutely positive I've done it right. Yeah, that that that's valid. Sorry, I was like, don't think you can... I'm getting a negative when I do it in my head. Yeah, a negative square root. Um, what was this quiz out of? Out of 16? Give yourself a score out of... Does that work? 16? Let's see. 7 marks plus 9. Sure, that works. Give yourself a lovely score out of 16, please. Uh, Brandon, put an omit on yours, please. I would normally collect these, but you probably want these to study from, yes? So, person on the end of each row, write your name on a piece of paper, put the score there, and pass the piece of paper along. <laughs>